So, uh, hello everybody. Welcome to this uh, online presentation of our finance program. So my name is Audrey. I am the person in charge of uh, welcoming the applicants and managing your application files for the Master in Finance. Uh, we are very happy to have you this morning uh, for this live webinar and uh, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Gregory Moscato, the Master in Finance Program Director. Uh, is going to tell you more about uh, the program and after the presentation, you will be able to ask your questions. So uh, you have a little button actually that allows you to raise your hands. So don't hesitate actually to raise your hands in the end. And uh, of course, during the presentation, you can also send me questions uh, uh, by writing. And All right. All right. I, I just lost the connection for a little while. I missed the, the end part. Um, may I start? Yes, I think we are all back on track. All right, very good. So uh, welcome everyone. It's a great pleasure this morning uh, to have you uh, with us, even though online. Um, we are well in Monaco, beautiful Monaco today, actually a sunny day. And today we're here because you have some interest in doing a master's in finance at the International University of Monaco. Now, most of you probably know already a bit this university. It's a small business school. Um, well, when, when I say small, you know, consider the size of Monaco, not so small. Um, and we have been expanding uh, for the past few years. And in particular, we've been expanding around a few core ideas about our teaching philosophy, about the way we view uh, the learning experience of each student. Um, is a big representation of that philosophy and um, I hope you enjoy at least uh, the, the way we approach um, our educational philosophy and the way we transmit knowledge to help students uh, go to where they want to go professionally later on. So let's see if I can uh, well, all right, so this is uh, our presentation for the Masters in Finance. The building that you're seeing here, this white stylish building, is where the International University of Monaco is located. Uh, we've actually moved uh, there uh, less than nine months ago. Brand new facilities, great, I'm sure, will do. Um, this is Monaco, as I mentioned, a very small place, two square kilometers. But as you will see from the financial perspective, Monaco is probably one of the most concentrated area of financial, regulated financial companies and finance professionals. But more to that in a few minutes. Before we get into the specificities of the program itself, I'd like to take a step back and ask a very important question for you. Why should you do a master's in finance? Yes, this is a fundamental question you should ask yourself. If you're here, it's probably because you've understood that in order to join the financial industry, financial industry is quite demanding. Uh, they not only expect a high level of technical knowledge, uh, which is typically, um, you get a first impression during your bachelor studies and maybe uh, you've done a, a bit of internships or you have a couple of years of work typically. Um, but the reality is in order to progress, um, the industry really expects you to have a strong technical background. Uh, on top of that technical background, they also, uh, in particular, uh, the more challenging and interesting jobs, mainly the front office positions uh, within the financial industry, require a fair amount of analysis. And who says analysis says critical thinking. Um, 
So technical knowledge, um, a critical mind and an ability to see and look and be curious um, and go beyond the obvious. And then a number of also behaviors and behavioral codes are inside that industry. Um, you could say to a certain extent, this is a very normative industry. Um, this is an industry that thrive on risks. And if there's one risk they typically try to avoid is the risk they take with the people they work with. They're top people, people able to um, have the best professional work together. Of course, no matter what your position, even if you're not, I would say, a client relationship type of, uh, of um, activity or, or, or profession, you will see that most finance people are also great communicants. Even financial analysts have to sell what they do to the brokers, to the traders, to the investment committees. So those four dimensions of critical and this is what you should expect when it master's level, right? The second large reason is that on top of all those requirements, when we talk about finance, we talk about an industry that is in fact really large and offers many opportunities to many different, suited to many different types of personalities from, I would say, the most qualitative, um, communicative type of people who are going to engage with clients typically directly to people who are very analytical, more suited to uh, analyst position, portfolio manager positions, etc. to those who are going to be very techies and program staff, to others who are more managerial, for example, and want to manage teams, financial teams, etc. So there's really a variety of uh, a dimension within the, the, the financial industry, which of course appeal to many different types of people. And that's great news for you because that also means that um, the industry, despite having high expectation, is welcoming people from all over the world and is welcoming people from various different backgrounds. All right. So um, the last. Uh, typical bit of why people want to do a master's in finance, they also want to have a network and start their career having the strongest network possible to foster the best dynamics so they can launch their career, get to a different uh, position if they already had one, or to literally try a new angle, new field, or go after some of the most demanding uh, um, careers possible, right? So, well, if that's you, if you feel this is uh, what you expect and what you look for, let's see to address all those dimensions. Now, first, let's take a bit of a step back and look at the program. Um, it's a 16 month program, but the reality is the academic components, like the academic courses are compacted over 10 months. 10 months of dedicated courses, solely financial courses, and there's no marketing, managerial stuff. It's pure dedicated finance. And to focus on the most applied knowledge possible. And to do that, we have a great combination of faculty, which is PhD professors, all publishing in top research journals in their respective fields. And we combine that with professionals. Professionals um, who are basically not only having an experience in pedagogy and uh, in their ability to teach, but more importantly, they also have a fantastic um, experience in the very specific field they teach. I'll give you an example. Um, real estate course is taught by a professor who is himself a chairman of a large um, um, real estate private equity fund. Um, we are the course in hedge funds, for example, is taught by a fund manager currently actually managing his fund is take, taking you know, one week every other, uh, every other week to teach at IUM, et cetera, et cetera. So we have uh, that combination. We bring in, of course, um, 
private bankers and portfolio managers to also specifically you know teach uh, modules dedicated to those areas right. now um, it's a master where we as you see so this said uh, we also like to be competitive and to be competitive in particular with the outside um, and so we do engage into um, a variety of events. One of them is the CFA Challenge. Now, the CFA Research Challenge is a competition that pits different schools together. And where we like that, it allows us to showcase at the world uh, scale what we can do and see how we fare against other programs. Not to brag, but this year we end up second in our in our league. So I think uh, it was a, a very good result. Um, other dimension of the program, of course, is the multinational dimension. When I say multinational, think that in a group of 25 to 30 students, which is typically the average group we, we um, want to have for the full time, um, we have around 50 nationalities. So no really one nationality will be dominating. We tend to have a few more French and Italians, but even them uh, do not represent more than 20% of the whole program. So I would say the main area that is represented is Europe, Western Europe more at large, and Northern Europe also, uh, with Nordics very well represented, uh, as well as a bit of uh, Eastern Europe and Southern Europe. And so we, we have, uh, uh, from that perspective, students coming from all over the countries, but we also have North American, we have students coming from Middle East, Asia, sometimes Southeast Asia, uh, and also South America, and, and a few also people coming from the Af African continent as well. All right, so big spread. Um, now those people, we combine them together, like I said, dynamics where they learn together, where they are um, able to support each other. And we, you know, encourage all the students, not just to learn from an academic perspective, but also very quickly to be linked to the local community, the financial industry. How do we do that? Well, we have a career service and networking uh, um, department that uh, help connect all individual students with a mentor, uh, that connect them with a variety of firms, that organizes many events, as you will see, and <clears throat> which allow to capitalize on IUM's large network within Monaco in particular. Um, so that sort of personalized coaching, um, these connections with Monaco, with other areas also, including London, Switzerland, Germany, for example, uh, and France, of course, uh, create a, a, an immediate uh, network that you can capitalize uh, you have on the slide a number of our uh, partners. Uh, we, for example, have specific local partners with whom we have dedicated events like Barclays, like Edmond Rothschild or CMB. Um, and we also have an X-ray dimension, which is our London track. Every student that goes and, and, and pursues the Masters in Finance uh, at the end of the 10 months gets to spend two weeks in London. What do we do in London? Well, as you will see, we do many things, but more to that in a second. Before that, I'd like to um, highlight the structure of the program itself. All right, so what you can see is, is where all the, what I would call the core courses in finance are being shared by all students. Um, now, why do we do that? Because competence is not an option. That you go into wealth management, that you decide to do more the private equity, the M&A side, or if you want to go with portfolio management, hedge funds, uh, and you name it, or other dimension that you want to integrate, maybe a, a family office. Ultimately, uh, what we want is for you to have a strong backbone. So everyone, so competence is not an option, in other words. Uh, so we want you guys to have strong courses. So think about you know, corporate finance, financial accounting, um, valuation courses, portfolio management, 
risk management, um, investment banking, derivatives. No matter what you choose a specialization, you all go through those common courses uh, and get strong in those very areas. Then from uh, January, you get to choose between two specialization, essentially the private banking and wealth management. Uh, that leads to, as you will see, a number of different careers like integrating, of course, uh, private banks, uh, independent asset managers, or joining family offices mainly, or the hedge fund and private equity, which really leads to a variety of other careers, including, uh, I would say, more largely asset management uh, uh, positions, uh, analyst position, um, um, fund manager position in times, trading, of course, and then on the hedge fund, on, I'm sorry, on the private equity and venture capital side, um, what I would call the transactional side of finance. So mergers and acquisition, uh, how to acquire a company, analyze a specific individual company and make an acquisition. So very different profiles, very different careers, um, all pretty exciting if you ask me. Um, and this, um, of course, that dimension, you get to explore it after the 10 months, once you start to integrate your capstone project, a lot of students, as you'll see, choose to do an internship. So a few also like to um, instead pursue, for example, a thesis, a master's thesis, typically to develop an investment strategy of something very specific they want to showcase employers later on. Um, so when we talk about the master's in finance at Monaco, of course, the dimensions that makes the, probably a big difference is Monaco itself. Uh, so what can you find in Monaco? First, probably the most striking element once you're there is that Monaco being so small becomes in an amazing financial campus. You have to realize that regulated financial institutions close to 3,000 finance professionals. That's a lot of finance professional per square meters. The good news is IOM is in touch with every single regulated financial institution. We work with them on a variety of projects, including for professional certifications. We are the only institution certifying all those professionals. So they get to IOM, we know them. They've been hiring our students for quite some time, and therefore, we are able to that allows you to get in touch directly with those firms and with those individuals, uh, including those that are doing what you want to do. Um, on top of, I would say, that general uh, frame to uh, further uh, foster links with the local community, we do a number of things. For example, we do the International Business Days. International Business Days, three days where we invite a variety of firms uh, financial firms, both from Monaco and from the outside of Monaco. So we get, depending on the year, between 25 and 30 firms per year that join us uh, just for the financial dimensions. We explore, you know, a variety of uh, um, topics from brokers to banks. We have fund managers that come. We have bank directors, HR, analysts, you name it you get to interact with a lot of them. Uh, on top of the International Business Days, we have specific events with some of our partners, like the Barclays Days, where we get to spend in between uh, one day uh, within Barclays uh, facilities, where we get to interact with a variety of professionals. Sometimes they bring in a top clients uh, to um, share their perspective on what it means and what they expect uh, stop of high net worth individuals using financial services. We do trading, we do a variety of things. I've mentioned already the CFA Research Challenge. Um, I've also mentioned, but guess what? Um, we are also able to bring through Monaco, um, we are able to bring a variety of guest speakers. Uh, top guest speakers, including uh, through uh, our connections, for example, with Monaco Venture Capital, we've been able to, to bring some of the very best CEOs out there of uh, um, private equity companies, 
I'm thinking about, you know, like Mr. Schwartzman from BlackRock or Mr. Cravis from KKR. Guys like that. Um, we get to do a number of visits of companies. We have less formal also events like networking cocktails, big networking cocktails. And then we have, of course, conferences, both in-house conferences and also outside conferences organized by the local community where our students are invited. Um, so you can see that we have a fantastic admissions team. Uh, your main contact, of course, and you, you, you've met uh, with Audrey already, uh, but I encourage you, of course, uh, to uh, go back to Audrey for uh, all the uh, questions now today, but more importantly, even after uh, this, uh, uh, this event today, um, she will be, of course, of a great assistance to you. Audrey, do we have maybe uh, a few questions we could start with? Yes, uh, well, basically we can, uh, we can start with the questions now. So uh, I can see that uh, some of you already um, have already gone through the application process. Um, some of you are already enrolled also uh, for the Master in Finance. Uh, so please feel free to ask your questions. Uh, you have a little button allowing you to raise your hands actually. So please do so, and uh, we will uh, unmute you actually so that you can ask the question directly. Okay, so for the time being, I don't see any question. Okay, so then if there's no question, I'm going to be the one asking questions then. <laughs> Oh, yes. Uh, I have something. Sorry, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kurt Johnson, maybe Kurt. Uh, well, I have your question written here. Um, okay. Have you had anyone from Australia enroll into the MSc in finance? Alors, this year, as far as my memory serves, no, we have not had anyone from Australia. In the past, yes, we've had uh, a couple of Australians uh, a few years back, actually. Uh, as I said, we tend to have students really coming from all continents and uh, Australia is not uh, an exception to that. Yes. Okay. Um, maybe while uh, we wait for other questions, I can tell a few words regarding the application process. Sure, uh, of course. For those of you who haven't done it yet. So basically, uh, there are mainly two steps in the application process. Uh, uh, the first one is that you uh, need to go on the website of the university, uh, enter your basic information, name, address, phone number, this kind of things, and then you will be able to uh, upload your different documents. So everything happens online. So the documents you need to provide us are basically your CV, um, your grades, and uh, your transcripts, actually, uh, of your, your bachelor's degree. Of course, many of you don't have a bachelor's degree yet. So it's not a problem. You just need the transcripts to assess your academic level. We will also need to get uh, a proof of English proficiency. It can be IELTS, it can be TOEFL, uh, it can be Cambridge. Uh, we also need to get, um, well, photocopy of your passport, ID picture. And it's not mandatory, but it's nice to have one, a letter of, uh, letter of recommendation. Uh, it can, be, can come from one of your teachers or somebody you worked with during an internship. Um, so these are the documents that you need to provide. When I receive those documents on the dedicated platform, I'm contacting you and then I'm organizing for you uh, your interview with Dr. Moscato. Uh, so uh, the idea of the interview would be to, uh, well, dig into your file, uh, uh, more into details. Uh, the idea would be to know you better and to know how you would be a good fit for the program and also how the program would be a good fit for you because it works in two ways around actually. 
Um, so once you have the interview, you have an answer very shortly because we hold the jury um, each week. So basically the maximum that you can get between when we receive your file, when you have the interview, let's say, and the final answer is one week. So it can be a very quick process actually. Uh, All right. I, I see we have a few questions maybe here with, yes. that I can, I can address. I'll, I'll start with, uh, with uh, the, the first one, and I think one that everybody has uh, in mind. Uh, of course, the fact admissions and date for this year. Well, I would say so far, no. I would say the admissions uh, process has been on track, and I must say to my... Uh, to my um, surprise, uh, if anything, uh, we've had uh, um, a very sm smooth process. A lot of our process takes place online to begin with. Uh, the only thing that has been uh, put, uh, of course, to a hold are the actual visits of the university. As you can imagine, uh, we are abiding by the strictest uh, uh, protection measures possible um, to avoid any problem. Uh, but so far, um, all the admission process uh, follows its course. Uh, the uh, actual uh, the class for next year uh, is shaping uh, pretty well uh, with uh, a great candidates. And I must say, uh, I'm pretty excited about the group that, uh, that is starting to, to be formed. Um, we have no indication to make us think that there would be any particular issues uh, for September intake. I must say, uh, we even, I would say, the, through this difficult moment, in a sense, um, which is a, uh, a challenge for most economies, but it is also a challenge, I would say, for most business schools. Um, but we've, we were, in a sense, lucky, in a sense that we were quite prepared um, because we have online capacities. And so within less than one week, we were able to very swiftly shift our courses uh, toward a more online dimension with videos, contents, with full support and the entire staff and faculty has been able to uh, do this transition. So I would say right now as we speak, all the program is continuing and it, I would, despite the circumstances, I would say in a rather smooth manner and the learning process has been uh, maintained. Um, so, will uh, the coronavirus be beaten by September? We all hope so, for sure. Um, in any case, we are more than ready uh, to to integrate our new students. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not the optimist type in general, but I'm not a pessimist either. I think, you know, we need to let the the coming weeks uh, run their course and uh, let the governments. Uh, a fight and the doctors fight this disease as much as they can. Uh, I think we will see much more clearly um, how we are able to beat it uh, within one or two months, of course. Uh, but we'll keep you, of course, updated. But so far, um, neither admissions nor the dates for entry, so it's September, are being uh, changed. Um, I'm getting to the second questions we're having, which is actually the third question now that we're having. Uh, what are we doing in London? That's a very good question, actually. Um, we go to London for a variety of reasons, among which we are taking specific courses, which are, I would say, um, a bit more specific and, and linked to some strong dimensions of uh, London. For example, this year, the two courses that are being uh, provided to students is a... a a corporate restructuring course and a course with a very sexy name called Perspective from the Trading Floor. And that later course, for example, is a, a course dedicated to exposing all the various uh, um, trading floor within investment banking. And it is taught by an um, uh, ex-managing uh, director of uh, JP Morgan. So things that is not so easy to replicate in Monaco, we try to do it in London. In addition to those courses, we also do uh, company visits. Um, we do a variety. Our last year, uh, we did BlackRock, uh, Morgan Stanley, Man Investment, 
which is one of the largest uh, hedge fund, uh, publicly uh, traded hedge fund in the UK. We did uh, a, a smaller hedge fund, Meteor Capital, and um, I think the fifth one must have been probably in Bloomberg. Um, and we do also at least one or two uh, networking events. So we bring in alumni. We, uh, we sometimes we have done that in the past. For example, at the Monaco Embassy. Sometimes we, we go to other uh, fancy locations. And the idea is to bring in some of our contacts from London, uh, including some alumni, and for you uh, to get and meet to them and, and interact with them. Uh, we bring in also sometimes recruiters, for example. And the reason we do all those things is really for helping all our students to um, realize that what we do and the education they've received uh, is not just an education that would be only centered for Monaco. Uh, it's particularly suited to Monaco and of course we have emphasized and made sure that in the specializations we picked uh, we were able to serve some of the needs of Monaco. But the reality is it's an education that allows you to be competitive anywhere, anywhere in the world and the best way to prove it is, of course, for you to realize it by, by you know, exposing yourself to someone to see that, yes, it's very competitive, but the education you received allows you to compete well and allows you to have you on the clues on how to, you know, win that competition. And to us, that's very important. Um, well, I hope it answers a bit of the question about the London track. Um, is a financial background in bachelor's necessary for the MSc in finance? Hello. A financial background at the bachelor level, of course, is a background that gives you a competitive advantage. That is for sure. This said, we also bring in um, individuals which have a different background. Um, it can be students that come from an engineer schools. Uh, sometimes those who are focused more on economics per se than finance, but we also sometimes give um, our chance to students um, which do not have per se a bachelor linked to finance, but that have something specific. Typically, it's a combination of high capacity, um, uh, a proof of success in, in the past and proof of commitment, um, in whatever they've done in the past, including in different uh, dimension studies. And the reason we do that, and the reason why we are open to also non-financial background is, well, for a variety of reasons. First, because finance attracts people from all kinds of backgrounds and combine them uh, uh, in, in an amazing manner. But also because we do have a long history of non-financial background students succeeding massively once they join us. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples uh, so you, it's very clear. Um, we've integrated people, for example, that um, had an extensive work experience in an unrelated field. When I say extensive experience, I'm talking about sometimes more than 10 years of experience in non-financial background. They had a bit of a business school, not specifically finance oriented, but they wanted to make a totally a big shift um, in their careers. Is this a risk for us to take a, a candidate like that? Well, it depends. We have, I had the, the chance to meet uh, that particular gentleman and realize that gentleman had every qualities we were looking for in terms of commitment, in terms of brain, in terms of curiosity, in terms of drive. Uh, about and thirst to, to, to succeed. And therefore we integrated um, that uh, gentleman. Turns out he ended up valedictorian of his class, first of his class. Um, was not just one of the friendliest person of, uh, of the group, but also one of the most committed and literally in between the work he had done before joining the masters in finance and so the uh, the two three months of preparation he, he he dedicated to before joining us and then the commitment he showed um he had a fantastic uh, really a path 
with us and after uh, of course living with us uh, he's now a CFA level three so a full-fledged CFA uh, charter holder and works now for a large family office uh, as a, a CFO um, so we have those uh, uh, great stories from non-initial finance background um, so it really depends on you basically I mean uh, we if you come with a clear a perspective of why you want to do a master's in finance if you do have a real interest and passion for finance and if you're able to uh, what we do for example if we feel technically you may lack uh, what other candidates typically have we may ask you for example to complete an online module before joining the master's in finance so typically a what we call the MBA math that allows within less than two months to acquire some I would say fair amount of fundamentals because we do need a few fundamentals. We need you to have a fundamental in accounting. We need you to have a fundamental of, uh, I would say, financial management. So essentially time value of money calculation uh, to understand the very basic building blocks of valuations. And then um, a bit of um, programming, essentially Excel is enough for us uh, and a bit of, um, of uh, economics and macroeconomics in particular to understand how the uh, various elements within an economy works together. But this is really what we, we ask before you actually join us, um, but we are very open to a variety of files and for good reasons. Um, thank you, Gregory. We have uh, another question. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have Bloomberg terminals and do you use them during courses? We do have a Bloomberg terminal. We also have um, a Reuters, um, Acon um, screens, if you want, uh, logins, in other words. And yes, we do use them in, uh, in class. We use them in a variety of manners. Now, it goes back to the philosophy that I was mentioning, the pedagogical philosophy. Maybe I should talk about that um, terminal. Now, the philosophy that we're having is that um, whatever we teach needs to be as applied and hands-on as possible. In other words, needs to be linked to the reality of financial markets and the reality of what the industry is expecting. So when we do work, it's not that we shy away from theory, but I would say a primary emphasis is on what can you do at the end of a course? And in order to be able for you to be able to do something, uh, what better way than to work on real life cases, on real financial data. So you do have courses like, you know, even courses, basic courses like statistics applied to financial data analysis, which are going to, you know, rely exclusively on live data. You have courses like the valuation courses or the accounting course or even the corporate finance courses which are, for example, going to ask you to uh, dedicate uh, your analysis to specific real life companies, right? Uh, so for that, of course, we have those uh, terminals. Um, you have access to, to those terminals uh, freely and you are able, of course, to work on them, get the data you need, uh, sometimes also explore uh, a variety of functions and markets. And um, I must say, this is today uh, a, a must have in our philosophy. Um, next to that philosophy, I'd, I'd like to talk more at large about the other dimensions about what we do at IUM and what we do specifically in the Masters in Finance. I mentioned that um, we encourage cooperation between students. Uh, part of the reason is, you know, the program is quite demanding. Uh, we give you a lot of work, we push you typically out of your comfort zone. And so we don't think it's necessary for you guys on top of that, um, I would say pressure we provide uh, to have some kind of an extraordinary competition between you. We're very competitive with the outside, but within the group, we really want you guys to be very strong together, as strong as possible, yes? And to help you do that also, we really uh, implement a philosophy of individual attention. So we ask you to work together, we ask you to support each other, but you get an individual follow-up from your professors, 
from, of course, myself as your program director, from the staff also that is there and dedicated to help you in any way they can. So your experience more at large, not just the learning experience is, a, is a, a, the best experience possible. And the idea is that by combining that supportive uh, um, from the professors, from the, the, the program director and the staff, and as well as having a positive mindset within the group, a group of people working together and being happy about it, then you get further, you learn more, you learn also from each other, you support each other, you get stronger, not only individually, but also collectively. Um, I'm seeing I have another question from Kurt. Um, alors, oh, very good question. Yes, in fact, um, if we think, alors, in the uh, admission process, like, um, so the, the question, I'm sorry, from Kurt was, you know, the information on macroeconomics, accounting, mathematics, etc., that we ask uh, candidates to complete, um, is this available on the website? Oh, it's not available on our website. We actually uh, have partnered with an external providers, uh, which we've worked for more than a decade with. Um, and if your candidacy is um, accepted, what we do there, we get you in touch with them. Uh, we have special conditions. So again, I mean, it's a, it's a non, we have no commercial affiliation to them whatsoever. It's just they do a, a great work for us and have been you know, training uh, our candidates for, like, like I said, more than a decade uh, and quite successfully so. So once you've been accepted and if the admissions uh, committee has assessed that, yes, you are, you are the right, uh, individual and you have the right mindset and drive but we feel you need a bit of support on the technical side then we provide you a direct access uh, to those um, uh, to that specific uh, track um, it's an online not very expensive I think it costs something like hundred and twenty dollars something like that and within less than two months it allows you to complete all those different modules uh, which basically uh, uh, prepare yourself uh, quite well. Uh, and uh, I have yet to have a, a person that completes that, uh, that um, uh, sort of prep uh, program that did not do well afterwards in the program. So this is why we have a, um, a high degree of confidence uh, in integrating uh, non-financial profiles. Uh, we have a question from uh, uh, Sander, um, who is asking regarding uh, a third specialization. He said, I heard somewhere that there might be a third specialization next year. If so, could you please elaborate? Uh, there is, in fact, uh, not just next year. There's, uh, as of this year, a third specialization. Uh, the reason I haven't mentioned it uh, uh, in today's presentation is because it's a specific track. Um, it's a what we call apprenticeship uh, track where um, you instead of completing the academic components of the courses in 10 months you have to complete it over a two-year period and the reason you have to complete over a two-year period is because you're spending half your time more or less working within a bank or financial institution and then half uh, your time uh, taking the courses so you only taking half the classes in the first year and the other half. Um, the specialization itself is a bit different because it's geared more toward what I would call support position. Like the full time is mainly aiming at front office positions. So analysts, traders, fund managers, um, also client relationship managers, uh, private bankers, etc. So all those that are qualified uh, within the financial industry as front office. The other, so the apprenticeship uh, track itself is more geared to more what I call support positions. So more the middle office, a bit more like risk management on the one hand. Uh, we do give an emphasis on uh, compliance, for example, and on uh, corporate banking. Uh, opposed to private banking or investment banking. All right. Um, hello. 
if so, there's more questions about that truck, uh, maybe we, we can come back to it. But I, I see mm -hmm. there are also yes. other questions. Yes, we have, um, we have so a I have question, a, question, the question from Petar. Okay, so a question from Petar. Um, Okay, it's a very important question. Uh, so the question is, you know, how likely is it to be able to get a position in Monaco after graduating from the masters? Is there enough demand for entry position in the region? Great question, in fact. Um, probably the most important question maybe you should all ask yourself. Um, as I mentioned before, our obsession is for you guys to be able to integrate the financial industry. Um, now, we are benefiting from uh, um, an unusual environment in Monaco. 96 regulated financial institutions. Uh, we are in touch with absolutely every single of them, literally from an institution to another. Um, I would say more than two thirds of them have probably hired some of our students. Uh, and most of them come back to us and hire more of every year of, of our students. Um, the internships, uh, I would say a majority of students choose to do their inter internships in Monaco. I would say about last year, about two thirds of students who did an internship did their internship in Monaco. Why? I would say mainly because there is an offer. There's a, we have more internships offer than we have students, okay? Um, not because we're geniuses and simply because of that extraordinary environment so we benefit. There's only one university in Monaco and one program in masters uh, in finance and therefore they come to us and have been working with us for quite some time. So this is uh, um, why we have so many of our students doing their internships. Still a third of them will move out uh, and there's no limitation. I mean, last year we've had students going to Germany, the UK, uh, Switzerland, um, uh, Hong Kong. So then it becomes then, of course, uh, if you're from North America, you tend to aim back going to North America, uh, 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 the US or, or Canada, for example, uh, being the big, um, big hires of our American students, of course. Uh, so then it becomes a question of, you know, what do you want for your life? After graduation, I would say about only half of those who did an internship in Monaco are going to stay in Monaco. So you could say about every year, more than a third of uh, our students are being hired in Monaco. Yes, um, knowing that independently of um, that they target Monaco or not, the placement rates at graduation for the masters in finance, uh, last year was 92%, but I think on average is around the 88 to 90 percent. If you look at the past five, six years, this has been the placement rates that we have at graduation. So um, is there a lot of entry position in Monaco? There's a lot of entry position in Monaco actually, um, probably more so than uh, the high level uh, positions. The high level position, there are a lot of uh, high level positions as well in Monaco. But the competition, of course, as you can imagine, is pretty steep because you are not just competing against people living in Monaco and the surrounding areas, but you are competing, of course, from people coming from all over the world trying to get those positions. Uh, but again, uh, we have a long track record of uh, successfully placing our students. And this is, for example, also why we implemented uh, the uh, this year uh, the um, um, how do you say the um, mentorship uh, program. So what is the mentorship program? Because I haven't even mentioned it. There's so many things we, we do it, but we have implemented a, a, a mentorship program to help every single student to be linked to a financial professional from Monaco to help them guide them through. Um, I would say not just their their studies, but to start to fine tune their strategy for the after master, how to get to the position they really want to get. So we really try to match you with guys either from Monaco or alumni that have been in or all around the world, but that are doing what you want to do and that have walked 
uh, the same paths that you walk. So they've been through the masters in finance. They know how traffic can be at times. They also have lived through that transition from doing your studies to starting to look for positions to starting your career. And then they have a perspective on, well, what they now understand with a bit of a, of a, of a um, time away and, and, and now that they look uh, with a few years of experience, what uh, the, the best strategy may be, how to fine tune uh, your, your approach, uh, how also to build the skills you need to get specific positions, and uh, probably also help you navigate between different firms because as you know, different financial companies have totally different cultures and maybe better fit for you or, or a better fit for somebody else. So it's very important to understand not just what they want, but for you also to understand how they function, how they work, and if not only if you're a good fit for them, but if they are a good fit for you. And this is something we, we work, and we work with the, um, with the, um, um, depart the career department uh, to help you guys uh, through that process, not just to place you and to help you find the best positions, but also to have a coherent uh, perspective of, who you are, what you're trying to achieve, and finding the best way to get there. Okay, thank you, Gregory. Um, maybe uh, before we take another question, uh, mm -hmm. please to, to type your questions, guys. Don't hesitate. Um, uh, meanwhile, I would like maybe to say a few words regarding uh, the visa and the accommodation parts, uh, which can be a very important part because not of you. Not all of you are locals. Um, I can see that many of you come from all over the world. Uh, so basically, in terms of visa, just to let you know that we do have a student service department that will help you guys to find, uh, to, well, to, to go through the, the process for the visa. They will provide you with all documents you need to bring to the uh, consulate to obtain your, your visa, and they, they will follow up with you and with the administration uh, all through the process. So we take care of you for, for that part. Um, another important thing is accommodation. So basically, um, for this too, we do have possibilities to help you. We have different ways to do so. Uh, so the first one is uh, a platform that we put at the disposal of our enrolled students. Um, it's called Studapart. And uh, this is a platform where you can put your budget, uh, the place where you would like to live, and then it will give you different possibilities uh, in Monaco and in the surrounding cities. For those of you who don't know, Monaco is very special because one side of the street is Monaco and the opposite side is France. It's very, very close, so it's possible to commute every day uh, from France to Monaco uh, by bus, by train, by car, or even walking. Um, so many of you, many of the students actually live in France, so you will have uh, many different possibilities uh, on that platform. We will also provide you with list of real estate agencies. There are a lot in the region, so they will be able to uh, offer you very nice uh, flats. Uh, there will be possibilities to be on your own or to share flats also, so we offer the different possibilities. And uh, also one that I think that we put at your disposal is a housing Facebook group, uh, so that you guys can get in touch before even starting at the university. Uh, for some of you who want to share an apartment, uh, you will also have access to students who are finished with the studies, who leave their apartments, you can take it over. So basically, we put a lot of different things at your disposal to make sure that your arrival will be as smooth as possible. So are there any further questions? I cannot see any for the time being. OK. Uh, no, I think that we don't have any further question. Uh, Grigory, would you like to add something? Well, um, what I'd just like to have a, as a, maybe a conclusive remark um, is, of course, um, use this time well. I mean, we, we are living through a, a very unique um, time, very unique time. Um, probably you are having um, to live in a, in a variety of ways, but uh, I mean, at least here we, 
we are most of us confined, etc. So it, it allows us to have a, a good reflection about what we want, what we do, uh, and the reasons uh, why we do what we do. Um, doing a master's in finance is a decision you must own. Uh, you don't start a master's in finance, at least in a, in a good program, you don't do that out of sheer, you know, uh, I would say, well, let's try it, it may be nice, etc. No, um, when you apply, um, one of the core things will look is why you want to do a master's in finance. What is your ultimate objective? Uh, and also, how much homework have you done? You know, not just homework on us, but maybe also on other programs, on uh, also the type of positions you would want to, to target and the, and the career you'd like to have. And very often to be able to answer those questions, you have to ask yourself some fundamental questions about yourself. Um, again, you're not going to integrate the program and work 10, 12 hours a day if you don't know why you're doing it. It needs to start from something, some fire inside you, something that corresponds to you fundamentally. Um, and this would be probably one of the uh, fundamental advice I would say when you, you go about and trying to, to decide for your future, to decide if you want to do a master's degree, if you want to do a master's in finance, and if you want to do a master's in finance in a specific university like ours, uh, it needs to be the right for yourself. Know yourself, understand who you are, what are your core motivations, um, the strengths that you feel you have inside and what you have, uh, what you need to express. Maybe also to know maybe some of your darker sides, you know, the, the ones that uh, you feel you still need to work on. Um, and come together uh, with all that understanding in order to make the right decision. So trying to map out uh, a possible future for yourself that you are going to be able to identify the right university and the right program for you. And if that program uh, turns out to be uh, uh, the Masters in Finance in Monaco, great. And if not, but great also, that means you will have done that work, you will have been able to um, ask yourself the right questions about who you are, why you, why you do what you do, in order to make the right decision for yourself. If you feel this decision is to join us, then make sure you complete your applications well. Uh, all my applicants, I'm asking them to also, once they've completed, I would say, the fundamental application, in order to prepare for the... Um, the interviews, I'm asking you guys to write a few essays about yourself. Uh, make sure you spend enough time on those essays. Don't, don't just try to provide quick answers, which you think may be the right answer. There's no right answer. The only right answers are the answers where you show yourself, where you are able to, I guess, to, to, to reveal who you are and why you want to do what you want to do. And this is the best way for you uh, to be accepted in our program is yeah, to be who you are and to show us uh, what you want to do. And if that's a good match, I can tell you this. All right, I'm not sure if, Odai, yeah? Yes, um, well, any further questions from what I can see? Um, so uh, it's almost time to uh, close this webinar. Uh, um, just before we leave, uh, we would like to, uh, well, uh, offer you the possibility to get in touch with us. So you have here my contact details, so don't hesitate to email me, to call me. Uh, I am at your disposal to provide you with any information and I would be delighted to take care of your application files uh, as soon as uh, I receive them. So don't hesitate to, to get in touch with me. I'll be happy to help. All right. And if you have specific questions or academic questions,
or professional about the financial industry questions, do not hesitate, you know, channel the, them through Audrey. She will be in touch with me and I will do my best to address also those questions. Thank you very much for uh, attending. Thank you very much, Grigori, for this presentation and hope to uh, see you soon. All Thank right. you very much. See you guys. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Goodbye.